Stephen Harahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn the four key strategies that you need to transition your freelance gig to a profitable business built for growth and scale. Now I became a freelance designer the way 99% of the world became freelance designers. I had an in-house role, I had a design role within a studio, and over time I realized that I had a skill set that was of value in the marketplace. I had some freelance gigs on the side and I decided that I could trade in my day job for the full-time freelance role, so I went out by myself, but I never took the time to really understand what I needed to build as a business. I really just took the freelance clients that I had and I used them as my revenue for a time and you know I brought in more and more referrals and that was my business model. I got referrals, I produced the work for them, I got paid, that was my business. But I never really took the time to understand what a business model was all about, what I needed to do to grow, what I needed to do to market myself, to brand myself, and to bring in sales as well. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about in this video, how you can go from being that freelance designer who just jumped into the market, who hadn't taken the time to build all of these strategies in place, to now change your business into a model that can grow and scale. Now, first up is your business strategy. And the first area that I wanna talk about here is around your offer. Now, I went a long time without really understanding what an offer was about. I had my website, I had my services page, I had my about us page and my contact page. And I thought that was enough to bring in clients. I thought that when somebody would come to my website, they'd be able to see all that information and that would be enough for them to make a decision. But I was wrong, that is not how a website works. That is not how people make decisions. They don't just go to a website, look at the services page, and then come to the conclusion, okay, I wanna work with this agency. They, they really need a lot more than that and you really need to think about who your audience is and put put yourself into their shoes. They want an offer that's compelling. They want to be able to see the, the road forward. They wanna be able to see what exactly you're offering them and what kind of outcome they're gonna get from going with you. So you need to change your offer to be very, very much more specific and based on your audience's outcome. What outcome do they want? What is it that they want to achieve? And then you need to build your offer around that so you can show them that, hey, what I've got for you is gonna help you to achieve the outcome that you desire. So stop listing your services on there as you know print design services, website design services. These are services that your audience can go out and get anywhere. They can get them on Fiverr, they can get them on Upwork, but if you're able to understand the logistics of an offer and the psychology behind creating a compelling offer, well then you're gonna be able to structure your website and what, what it is that you do offer to your, your clients and your prospects in a much more effective way than you currently do. So look into what exactly you're offering and then structure that in a way that's compelling that focuses on your client's outcome. Now the second area of your business strategy I wanna to talk to you about is in and around your processes. Now if you speak to anybody who is in the business of buying and selling other businesses, they'll tell you that one of their biggest valuations is got to do with the processes of that business. Now, if you're a freelancer, if you've been in business for yourself for a while and you've been doing it solo and you, you, know, you haven't had anybody into your business to help you out with that, well then chances are you do most of your tasks just off the cuff. You do most of your tasks based on instinct because you have that experience, you know what you're doing. You jump from one task to the next and you knock over those tasks pretty quickly. But if you were to fall ill or if you wanted to scale up your business and you wanted to bring somebody in to help you under either of those conditions, well then you would struggle to be able to direct whoever was coming in without sitting down with them on a one-to-one -one basis and going through step-by-step -step exactly how you do everything. Take this time as an opportunity to document your processes in an SOP and that's a standard operating procedures. That is a document that you can list all of your tasks so that you can hand that over to somebody coming into your business and they'll know exactly what they need to do to achieve the outcomes that you're achieving. So take this time to really look into the nuts and bolts of your business. What is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Whether it's got to do with your invoicing, whether it's got to do with your design, with your marketing, whatever is in your business, whatever tasks you have within your business is uh, something that you need to document, is, is something that you 
need to have in an SOP. So take this opportunity to really go through every one of those steps. And once you have that down, you'll probably see that there are some steps in there that you can shortcut or there are some steps that are in there that probably don't need to be in there or some way that you can make them more efficient. When you document everything, that's when you get the opportunity to really review your processes and look at making your processes more efficient. And again, if you have this in place and if you're able, able to create a video as you're doing this, as you're going through, well then you're gonna have an asset there that you can hand over to somebody else coming in to help you within your business and then that will help you in the long run to be able to grow and scale your business. So take the opportunity to understand the processes within your business, document those processes, and if you can, record a video as well. Now, the second area of your business you should look at is your brand strategy. Now, I speak a lot about brand strategy, but when I speak about brand strategy, it's more so from the point of view of helping your clients. But here I'm talking about your own brand. So I'm talking about your brand strategy, and that starts with the position that you're taking in the market. What position are you currently taking in the market? Are you a freelance designer? Are you offering brochures, websites, logo designs? Does that categorize you as a general designer? How is it that you want your audience to see you? So this is an opportunity to really kind of take a step back and look at what you do on a day-to-day -a -day basis and where you can specialize. And, you know, that might throw up some opportunities within becoming an illustrator or a UX designer, a UI designer, or a brand strategist. There's a number of different roads that you can go down. But if you haven't taken the time at this point to really pres position your own brand effectively so that you can appeal to a certain type of person, well then, this is the perfect time to do that. Have a look at what you do well, have a look at where your passions are, and start you know, creating a position in the mind of your target audience and really define who it is that you're gonna serve out there in the marketplace and the value that you're gonna offer and why it is that you're gonna be different to all of the other competitors that are out there. And then once you've defined your position within the market, well then that flows into your messaging. So what are the key messages that you want your audience to understand about your brand, about why you're different, about the value that you offer and how are you gonna tell them? How are you gonna deliver those messages? What stories are you going to tell? And can you really resonate with who the audience is? Do you know the challenges that they're going through? Do you know the pain points that they're coming across? And can you put out messages that will that will really help your brand to resonate with what they're going through and who they are. And then of course, there's your brand identity as well. Now, obviously you will have your brand identity, you'll have your website, but if you're, you're gonna take this opportunity and change the positioning, your positioning in the marketplace, well then chances are you're gonna need to change your brand identity as well. Or maybe you just have had a plan for a long time to rebrand, you're not, you're not exactly happy with your brand identity and you want to rebrand. Now is a good time to have a look at your brand strategy as a whole, how you're presenting yourself in the market at the moment, and take this opportunity to set your brand on a different direction. Now, the third level within your business that you should really take a look at is your marketing strategy. Now, I'm not talking about referrals here, and if your business is surviving with 70 or more percent of business from referrals from, you know, from people who you know and they just land on your lap, well then that is not a strategy, that is not a marketing strategy. Yes, you might be keeping your head above water, you might even be doing well with referrals, but that is not a strategy because these referrals just come to you without you actually doing anything, without you strategizing, without you putting out anything into the marketplace. Now, of course, on the other hand, if you've taken the time to develop uh, an effective referral strategy and you're offering value to people who refer other people to you, well then yes, that is a marketing strategy. But nine times out of 10, most freelancers, most designers, they get most of their business through referrals. They don't actually have a specific marketing campaign in place. But this becomes a lot easier when you're very, very clear about the position that you wanna take in the market because defining a position in the market means understanding who your audience is on a really, really deep level. And if you, if you understand who they are, if you understand the position that you're taking in the market, well then you're gonna understand where they are 
in the marketplace, where they go to, where they congregate, and how to engage those people. Are you going to do this through content marketing? Are you going to start writing articles that's going to speak to who your audience is and the problems that they encounter? Or are you going to use paid ads to put out there into the marketplace, whether that's through Google AdWords or Facebook ads or any of the other paid platforms? So really taking a step back and asking yourself the question, how do I get new business? Because essentially that's what your marketing strategy lays out. It lays out how you get new business, how you get new leads into your business. And funnel marketing is something that you really need to understand here as well, because we do need on average eight touch points before we're ready to engage a business. And if you don't have a funnel set in place to, first of all, introduce yourself to who this audience is and then guide them through to what your offer is, which ties into the discussion that we had earlier about your business strategy, well then, you know, you're you're gonna struggle to be able to guide them through. They're not, as I said before, they're not just gonna go to your website, look at your services page, look at your About, at, uh, your about Us page and decide that they're gonna do business with you. One in 100,000 might do that, but it's very, very rare. You need a funnel in place. So if you don't have a marketing strategy at this point, if you haven't taken the time to understand what funnel marketing is all about, about, about you know, putting out a lead magnet onto your website that is very, very specific to who your audience is and then having a very, very structured follow-up sequence to guide them through to what your offer is, then you need to take the time to do that. So understand what your plan is to get new leads into your business and really define the strategy that you're gonna take going forward to really refine that process. And then level four is your sales strategy. So your business processes are in place, your offer is in place, you've got your brand strategy, your position, your key messages that you're sending out there and you know what your marketing strategy is now. You've got a lead magnet out there and you're bringing people through. Once they come through as a lead, then you still need to convert them into a sale. Now, there are a lot of different theories on sales practices and me personally, I don't like hard sales tactics and you know if you're a designer chances are you don't either because that's just the type of personality that designers are they don't you know they're they're not that type of person but you really do need to understand sales if you want to build your business whether you like sales or not whether you like hard sales tactics or not you need to understand sales now i'm not advocating hard sales tactics as i said before i don't like sales and i don't use hard sales tactics but i do understand the process of sales and i do understand that when i get a lead through the door when i get a lead through my website then i need to take specific steps to convert them into a sale and if i don't have those specific steps in place the chances of them converting into a sale are much much lower so take this time to really understand sales and if you understand sales through and through well then you can devise your own plan to convert your leads into sales without that hard pressure sales tactics and if you understand your industry if you understand branding if you understand brand strategy and if you're able to talk to your clients on a higher level well then you're going to be able to educate them and if you educate them if you give them some level of value without selling to them without pressure selling them well then you're going to earn that trust and you know they're going to be compelled to to continue working with you because you have already given, given them that value. So take the time to understand an actual sales process and develop a sales process for your business so that when you get leads, whether it's through a lead magnet or through a referral system, whatever it may be, that if you have the opportunity to speak to somebody, you're not just jumping on the phone and going, hey, how are you? My name's Steve how can I help you and, and let them direct the call. You need to have a very, very specific structure in place so that you have specific information that you wanna get from them, specific information that you wanna to give to them and then lead them down the path to taking, taking you up on your offer. Now, although all these four strategies need independent decisions, they're all interdependent as well and they all lean on each other. And if you're able to take the time to really understand and then develop a cohesive strategy that looks at your business process and your offer that looks at your brand strategy and your position and your key messages, your marketing strategy, how you're gonna engage, and then how you're gonna take your leads from a lead to a sale, well then you're gonna build a business process, you're gonna build a system that will allow you to grow and scale. So it's really important to understand those individual strategies, but it's also important to, uh, to understand that they are interdependent and they're all linked together to build a system that can help your business grow and scale. Now, if you want more branding tips and techniques like this, well then head on over to brandmasteracademy.com and get yourself signed 
sign up for the newsletter. It is free and I will drop those tips and techniques right into your inbox. And I do keep some exclusive content for my valued list as well. So get yourself signed up. But I want to know if you enjoyed this video, if you got a new perspective, if your situation is similar, if you got into freelance design in the same way that I did and you just picked up referrals and you never took the time to really understand your business model and understand your marketing and your sales process to bring in more business so you can grow and scale. If that is what you've gone through, please let me know in the comments below. Or if you took a different path and you have a different outlook, well then let me know in the comments below. If, you're, or if you've got any challenges at all in relation to transitioning from an in-house role or a studio role to a freelance designer role, well then let me know in the comments as well. I'll do my best to answer all of those. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Until next time, brand like a master, and I will see you in the next video.